Hello, everyone, and welcome to a triple play podcast called Three is a Magic Number. I call it Three is a Magic Number because my name is Britton Allen, and I look at the uh, lineup sheets every day for every uh, team in the MLB, and I see which players are shooting up, skyrocketing. That's not a skyrocket. That's my finger. But you know what I mean? Shooting up the lineups to bat first, second, or third in the order because that's where you get the most plate appearances. And if you play fantasy baseball, uh, plate appearances are the key to winning and getting those counting stats. But before I get to all that, I have a very special guest host today, a man who created the Palazzo podcast what is Palazzo? Well, it's two L's, two Z's. I know that. What does right. Palazzo even mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. We'll get to the specifics later. But what it does mean, I know this for a fact. It means energy. It means fun. It means really cool sound drops like Gary Busey, uh, <laughs> all hail Gary Busey and uh, Utah, give me two music, fun, but also great fantasy baseball information. And it's kind of hard when you think fantasy baseball information, fun. Sometimes those don't really go together, but they do like the two L's and two Z's go together on the Palazzo podcast. But there's more. This is also a man who in his first NFBC main event, which is the, uh, pay money leagues where in the main event you have to pay seventeen hundred dollars where to get the money don't ask but you pay seventeen hundred dollars for one entry and you go up against the best fantasy baseball players in the world and these guys and ladies are playing for money they have uh computer algorithms uh saber metrics they have big computers called Whoppers that know what DEF CON 5, 1 through 5 means. They have all that. But this is a man who in his first main event finished 136 out of 700 plus entries of the best fantasy baseball players in the world. What does that mean? That means he kicked a majority of their butts, which is very hard to do, but it shows you he knows what he's talking about, but there's more. This is also a man who every week fan tracks calls and gets him on the phone and says, uh, hello, sir. I really need you to produce a fantasy baseball article, but it has to be fantasy baseball confidential, meaning only the confidential information that you can get with these nuggets of fantasy baseball intelligence that you can only get by watching the games and actually seeing what's going on. It is called fantasy baseball confidential. It's on fan tracks every week. You must check it out, but wait, there's actually still more. This is also a man who is, and I'm getting a little excited going back and forth. So I, I you know, I'll try to try to contain myself, but a man who is also, the nicest, the kindest, goodest isn't a word, but I'm going to go ahead and say the goodest, one of the goodest people in the fantasy baseball industry. And I'm not just talking from reputation, mind you. I'm talking from my personal experience because uh, I DM'd this uh, gentleman and said, would you be willing to come on my podcast that nobody knows about <laughs> and you've never heard of but if you would i would really appreciate it and literally within uh, uh, that day dm me back and said of course i would be happy to do it now re remember I i'm not in the plaza discord i'm not a patreon at that point i'm literally random dude and uh but yet uh this man decided to 
email me back or uh, uh, DM me back, as the, the kids say with Twitter these days. <laughs> I guess nobody emails anymore. I don't know. But so uh, DM me back and said, of course, you let me know when and where. And that is probably a long winded introduction, but I had to try, I tried to get it all in there. This is my special co host, Michael Govier from the Palazzo Podcast. Michael, thank you so much for being here today. Utah, give me two. Hey, I had to do that for you. And I wanted to give you, man, you know how hard it was for me to sit there and not say anything? That was like I, three I, minutes. I, 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 I know. I'm, I'm, but most people have just turned it off by now. They're like, if, if this introduction doesn't end soon, um, we're just we're we're out. So why God? Why will it end? No, I uh, also finished third in the spirit of your show. Third in my main event league. Not only one thirty six overall, but I finished in third place, which gets you your money back. And I tell you this now, Britain. There is no league that you would rather get your money back and be so excited about it than in a main event league. I mean, when you Pay 100 bucks, 150 bucks, maybe $200 for a league, and you finish third, and you get your money back. You're like, okay, well, I got my money back. But when you get $1,700 back, you feel like you won. You're like, yes, woo, okay. What a big call, victory that was. They call it in the money. And that's, that's right. That's exactly what everyone wants to do is be in the money in those NFBC leagues. I, I play NFBC leagues too, but, uh, you know, I'm in the uh, uh, draft champions. Is, is, oh. is $150, which I enjoy is – uh, it is which is the 50 uh, round uh, draft and hold. So there's no fab like for right. So less commitment. It's it, it's less commitment. And like, I love to draft and doing a 50 round draft is a lot of fun for me because, you know, I'm drafting like, you know, Travis Swaggerty, you know, with, <laughs> with round 49, <laughs> just like, come on, Travis. And he's actually, he's actually up now. Uh, it, I don't think he makes a, you look that much smarter too. It makes me look so smart. It's, unfortunately, he's gone like zero and eleven. But yeah, yeah, but you know, I I had the right idea, just you know, uh, just not the execution. <laughs> but story sure, of my life. I but, play draft champions too, and I'm I'm not very good at it though. I've really never flourished in that format, and I'm not sure why that is. Still, I maybe I take too many risks and they don't work out or maybe I don't take enough risks and I can't foretell the future as well as a guy like you can Britain. So it's not my specialty. And I will also mention that this year's main event league is not going as well. Although I started out in first place after the first month, uh, falling on tremendous hard times, topping out, unfortunately with the injury to Ozzy Albies. So that's, oh. there goes my first overall pick. He's gone. And I am going to tell you now, I will probably drop him 60 day. IL. Two months minimum. I can't have him sit on my roster and hope that he comes back. So that's uh, just the kind of year it's been. I lost Freddie Peralta, lost Jesus Luzardo. The injuries will pile up, and then you're just kind of you got to show how good you are. You could you're stuck in a way, but you got to show. Hey, can I do this still? Can I overcome the odds? But in the league of death, I'm in. It's going to be really, really hard. But I'm going to try. I will never give up, Britain. I will never give up. That's a promise to you and all of your diehard loyal followers. All, all dozen. Yeah, all <laughs> dozen of them. Come on. We can fit them all in a minivan. It'll be great. Let's go to a bar. It's a, it's a grind. See, you know, Fab, you know, every single, what, do they run Sundays, I think, for That's main right. event Fab? Man, it, it's hard work, but uh, but it's a lot of fun. And see, like, you know, that's why I love your podcast, too. The, the Plaza podcast is because, you know, it's not just fantasy baseball information, you know, it, which it is. There's a lot of it, but it's also uh, it's fun. It's entertaining. It's energetic. And obviously anyone can see talking to you for for five seconds. It's high energy situation, which, you know, baseball in general doesn't seem sometimes to be all that high energy. But uh, <laughs> but that's that's what I love about it. And one of your uh, the the Plazo podcast now, it, it the first uh, I guess uh, uh, version of it was called it's Enrique Palazzo, which is a reference to the naked gun, right? That's right, baby. The, Hey, it's Enrique Palazzo fantasy baseball podcast. We went all the way with the title, the complete line from the 1988 film, the naked gun featuring one of the finest to this day in 2022, still one of the best 
Third acts, uh, deep scenes of a baseball event in film. It's not just one scene at a baseball stadium. It's the whole third act, basically. And it's going to be impossible for that ever to be topped. It's so good. So good. I, I, I haven't seen that movie in, in several years. You know, that sometimes they play it on, um, you know, MLB Network on like Sunday nights or something. And, but all, all I, but what I, I do remember is, um, uh, I'm sorry, where'd you go there? My bad. Uh, but what I do remember is just like bodies flying. Like there, there, there's a big scrum on the pitcher's yep. mound. And literally it's like, like Blues Brothers, you know, when the cars all start <laughs> flying, except it's bodies, except not real bodies. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're, they're totally just, they're dummies. Just, yeah, they're just dummies flying, mannequins or whatever flying <laughs> through the air. But and the uh, Queen but, of England is sitting right in front of it all. It's so so absurd, so absurd. And you got like eight broadcasters in the bo- in the booth with Dick Vitale is there with Mel Allen, Doctor Joyce Brothers. It's just so absurd. It Dick makes Edberg, no sense. I know it's so but it's funny. Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So I was so when I started first listening to your podcast, one of the things that really stirred, I'm 45 years old, that really stirred some memories was there's one section that you did. Uh, it was a housekeeping section and you played the opening theme to uh, Mr. Belvedere, which I, which I believe debuted in 1985, but I distinctly remember watching that show and the, it, had, it actually had a couple controversial episodes. I, I don't know if we want to get into it, but. Ooh, I remember that. Yeah, do you remember that's that? right. Yeah, I think you know. Sure. That. So Mr. Belvedere had some, uh, some, some stuff going on, a little bit of juice, a little bit of, uh, you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, some stuff going on. Bizarre. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I love, uh, you know, 80 sitcom stuff like that. I love those shows. So, of course my 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 genius brain was thinking all right so michael knows a lot about 80s sitcoms so that's what, fair yeah of course yeah exactly me, me too i love it so what better way to have a 80s sitcom discussion with michael than in the form of a trivia game i yes. hope you are ready because i love have trivia I have my 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 notes, my trivia <laughs> uh, questions, uh, and uh, there is a prize uh, if you Ooh. get uh, if you nail all of the answers. I, I don't know what that will be, but I'm sure it will be really nice. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, prizes are not fabulous. Guy got it. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, so rules and prizes subject to change uh, on a moment's notice, but. Are you ready to play 80s sitcom trivia? Hell yeah, let's do this. All right. One of the most popular shows in the 1980s was a little show about a bar in Boston that you would, you at the beginning, you see people walk down the stairs to, you'd see their stairs, and then the door would open, and everybody would be excited. Of course, that is Cheers, one of the most popular shows uh, in the history of uh, sitcoms. At the time, yeah, it was like right up there with MASH for longest running and one of the most watched final episodes. Yeah, one of, right where I believe they got hammered, if if I'm not mistaken, because I'm, I'm pretty sure I watched that show and and all the all the actors and the co stars just you know partied all night basically. But uh, that was, that's a great way to end that show. I think it makes it's it's about a, it's about a bar, so <laughs> it does make sense. But uh, ah, but doing a little research, uh, some heavy vetting for for the uh, tr- for the trivia. Yeah. Uh, I read, and it must be true because I read it on the internet, that seven actors and actresses from Cheers won Emmy awards, which is the Oscars for uh, television shows. Huh. Seven. That's a lot. That's a lot of Emmys going to. Uh, different actors and actresses. Can you name five of the actors or actresses that won Emmys as a result of their Cheers uh, actor and actress portrayals? Okay. Did that make uh, well, sense? Yeah, that I, made I total sense. Okay. There was seven actors that won Emmys on the show. Individual actors. That's wild. Correct. I got to name five. Let's go right off the bat. Woody Harrelson, I'm sure, won one. That is correct. 
Uh, is it obvious? Uh, I, I would I assume I, Ted Danson had to win one. That is correct. That is two. okay. All right, and then you have the two women. Now, originally Shelley Long was on the show, but did she win an Emmy or not? Because Kirstie Alley took over for Shelley Long. One of them definitely had to have won an Emmy. And I'm going to say Shelley Long did win an Emmy, and she thought she was so popular, she left the show because of that? Correct. And then she went on okay. to star in a terrible movie called Beverly Hills uh, Troop, <laughs> yeah. that, which ended her career, unfortunately. It did! A Just massive like that. bomb that doesn't get talked about enough, actually. You're right. Mm -mm. Yeah, should have stayed um, with that uh, TV money, but that's, that's what happened. Good happens. Lord. She wasn't so the Money great. Pit, though. I did enjoy the Money Pit with Tom Hanks and her. Not everyone loves that movie, but I enjoyed the Money Pit. I've never seen it. You never, never saw the Money it. Pit? That was I, right I never, during your time frame. I mean, you it, were It, it really younger, was. Like, and I distinctly remember going to the movie theater with my uh, mom and dad, and, and where I'm from, beautiful Jackson, Tennessee, at the one movie theater oh. to, see, to see Splash. Do you remember Splash? Sure. Also Tom Hanks. That's a Ron Howard film. John Ron Candy, Daryl Hannah. Exactly. And... Uh, you know, probably not appropriate for children. I believe there was a scene between a uh, mermaid and a man. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I do vaguely remember that in, in my young, yeah. tender age. Uh, so that was that was good. That was but, reenacted in the, uh, what was that, a couple years in, ago? In the, the Shape of Water. In the, That's exactly what I was thinking. Of. Very good. You nailed it. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah. so I've got three of these so far, right? So I've got Ted Danson, Woody Harrelson, and Shelley Long. Correct. I need two more. Uh, I gotta believe George Wint won an Emmy. He did not. Ah! That's that sucks. was a good guess. Uh, Norm, known for his funny uh, quips as he entered to go drink beer every single day. <laughs> <laughs> he never won. I guess he wasn't not funny enough. I see it. Yeah, uh, that's shocking. Or, or, may, or maybe you know he just. It, he, he, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, then it's obvious that, uh, I'm, of course, Kelsey Grammer won. How could I forget that? He went on to Frasier playing Dr. Frasier Crane originally for Cheers, right? He didn't. Wow. Holy cow. Well, I'm, I'm on Crazy. a cold streak here. Well, then, okay. John Ratzenberger won as the mailman Cliff. He didn't. <laughs> Now, remember, Holy crap, I'm running out of characters. Uh, remember, well, remember my my heavy vetting of this may be incorrect, but oh, from, from, my, from my research department um, that we only intern MIT uh, students. Uh, sure, nothing but the we, best. We don't. But yeah. uh, Ted Danson, Kirstie Alley, uh, B.B. Newworth. You remember B.B.? Yes, sure. She was I was going to go Dr. there. Crane. Uh, uh, Ray Perlman. Is that how you pronounce the, her name? Uh, she was the waitress. Oh, Rhea. Married Rhea, Rhea. Rhea Perlman. That's, Danny DeVito's yeah. wife or ex-wife now? I, yeah. I think they're st still married. Oh, good and, for them. And John Cleese. Do you remember John, John Cleese? John Cleese from Monty Python? Yes. So he guest starred and won like an Emmy guest starring? Must must have, according to my sources. But it was Ted Danson, Kirstie Alley, Shelley Long, B.B. Newirth, Woody Harrelson, uh, Rhea Perlman, and John Cleese were the seven that won Emmys as a result of appearing uh, in, in Cheers. That is an incredible question. I really enjoyed that. Isn't that Thank wild? You. That was... That was wild. I I learned something today on the show, and I didn't know that was going to happen. Frankly, I really didn't. Oh, the, the learning <laughs> uh, the learning train has left the station. <laughs> That's right. The schoolhouse rock theme is still holding true to this show. We're learning. We're making education fun. Expanding Although, horizons for absolutely you know pointless trivia. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was going to say well, I, I don't know what this education will help you yeah. with, but <laughs> yeah, trivials in the name, but. Uh, did you know that Woody Harrelson's father, uh, his biological father, Charles Harrelson, was a hitman who was arrested not once, not twice, but tried for three different murders. Wow. And was convicted in the last murder he was tried for, which was a federal judge in Texas. Holy cow. I have you never heard any of that. 
true, true story because I, you know, I was clicking around and I clicked on Woody Harrelson and it, and I had a thing about his father and yeah, his father was like a hitman for I don't know the mob, some criminal organization, and was oh. tried and convicted for murdering a United States District Court judge. Holy, holy talk about, Toledo! Talk about bringing down the podcast a little bit here. <laughs> that's hardcore. I mean, but that's fascinating information. You know. It, it, it's Britain true. people love true crime more than ever. So if you're going for that true crime audience, that's a smart move on your trying part. Trying to get trying to get those views up, you know, got to talk some <laughs> true crime on this. Uh, you know, no one wants to talk about the Pittsburgh Pirates, but when they talk about you know the the the, the hitman angle, you know, that just brings people in. Woo! But, yeah, that's for sure. All right, so that was a toughie, but let's go to number two. Who? Uh, we have actually discussed this show uh, previously. I can't remember how it came up. It probably had to do with uh, red wine on my part. But here yeah. is the trivia question. You remember the show Alf, obviously. Because it was a, a masterpiece. Hey, Willie, where's the cat? <laughs> what the cat? <laughs> Where is the cat, Alf? Um, you know, like the, t- the tail sticking out. <laughs> like, so stupid. Uh, but... He's like, why, why are you asking me? It's memorable. Uh, uh, where was Alf from? Can you name the planet? Well, this one I can absolutely nail. Without a doubt, the planet was called Melmac. I believe. Oh, I, that's a hundred percent correct. I cannot believe you got that correct. You know why that, I got that right? A, it's actually not because of the sitcom. It was because of the silly cartoon spinoff that they made, where he had this. You found out his name was Gordon, by the way. It's not his name was not just Alf. He was called Gordon on his home planet from Melmac, and all of this stuff was in this very catchy opening theme for the cartoon show, which is a Saturday morning thing for NBC. I remember that. I remember <laughs> that. I, I was such an ALF fan growing up. I had a a, a plush toy ALF. Oh, yeah. yeah. I bought one six years ago, and I gave it to my friend because she had a daughter, and I was like, you know what? I got to give this to her. Let this ALF tradition carry forth to a new generation and make sure that the dog is not eating squeaky toys during a, the show. So, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> and do you remember... <laughs> squeaky toys. And do you remember, like... It, it, like sometimes when like when an actress gets pregnant and the the producers like put her be- put her behind a couch you know, oh sure yeah that, that's what they did with alf like they they put a you, you know what whatever puppeteer you know they he was always like you could only <laughs> see this far up he's always behind, behind the, the couch, couch. yeah, yeah like, exactly that's exactly how i remember it <laughs> that's right he, he was he was never like sitting you know sitting on the couch he was standing behind the couch for some reason <laughs> But that was a great show, Alf. That actually ran for like five, uh, or I, I can't remember how many seasons it, it was, but it feels like forever. And as I recall, the last episode, Alf gets busted by, you know, the oh, Area no. 51 guys or whatever. And in the last episode, it said it read to be continued, but it was never picked up. And they pulled never, the plug. It, they pulled the, 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 the show uh, got you know, canceled and it was never continued. No one yeah, ever- that's bogus. I will tell you this, by the way, another fun fact about this show in a sort of way, there's a movie called Permanent Midnight that stars Ben Stiller from 1998. And it's basically about former comedy writer from ALF. He wrote on ALF the sitcom, but he hated it so much and he was addicted to heroin. He had a major drug problem. And it's actually a very dark Ben Stiller turn. He plays Jerry Stahl, this writer who's addicted to heroin because he hates his job and he they come up with this character because they can't use alf in the movie where there's all these dream sequences and like drug freak out scenes with this even more bizarre alien looking thing that's not alf exactly but it's supposed to imply that it is alf it's really weird if you liked alf at all i would recommend at least watching permanent midnight one time that sounds really dark and really cool so i'm definitely yeah. going to check that out permanent midnight yeah that does that that does sound like some uh, some type of heroin induced uh, situation there unfortunately <laughs> it's a but, weird movie but it's a pretty serious film too uh, ben stiller getting his dramatic chops going in 1998 right that, that and then he decided you know to heck with all this artsy stuff i'm going to do uh uh oh what was reality bites 
Oh, I love Reality Bites. Remember he that? directed that too. It's amazing. He, was- he did with uh, Ethan Hawke and uh, what was the actress's name? Winona Ryder. That was it. one and only the crush of so many young men and probably full blown adult men throughout the 1990s, nonstop. Winona Ryder. Everyone loved her. All all men <laughs> of all age groups. Loved I've heard. Uh, yeah, seriously, from your age to my age to the previous generation and the old weirdo perverts, they all were obsessed with Winona Ryder because she was just a beautiful woman who was a very talented actress, and she was the it girl of that period. Oh yeah, she was awesome. Um, I, I think she was. Wasn't she the, one of one of the characters in Stranger Things? Uh, yeah, Netflix. the shit where she's had a new life on the show. That's right. She plays the mom of Will, and she's the protector. That's right. Yeah, man. Life comes at you fast. You know, one minute you're in a reality bites, the next minute, you know, you're playing the mom. And <laughs> as a 45 year old, I know how that goes. <laughs> That's funny. Right. Well said. Well said, Britton. I've got a, th- a third uh, uh, trivia question for you. Now, this Let's one, go. I can't believe you got the, the last one. This one is even more obscure, but uh, but if you can get it, uh, my definitely hats off. Okay, so in 1985, a show debuted with this description of the plot, and th- this came out in a press release in 1985 to to get everybody excited about the television show. And I quote: okay. "A suburban family encounters exciting adventures with their next door neighbors and a robot." That looks like a human child. Uh, so I have to name the show. Is that what you're telling me here? Yeah. Is it? My gut's telling me it's Small Wonder. That's 100% correct. Yeah! It, ra- it ran for four years. And it wow, was really? Sh- it was a show. Uh, you know what's funny is I, I wonder how that how that came up in a meeting. Like, hey, Let's get this suburban family, you know, with some exciting adventures with their neighbors, but it needs something else. And they're like, <laughs> what about an alien? Oh, no, that, that's already taken. Um, oh, mm-hmm. I know. Let's get, let's get a little girl as a robot. And, you know, that'll, that'll make everything really interesting. And did she like take her face off one time? And there's like, you can see like her robot parts behind her face or something. Like, like a Teddy <laughs> Ruxpin. Like if you yeah. turn her around, she had like, you know, the beep, boop, beep, bop, you know, thing uh, with the little <laughs> lights and vacuum tubes and stuff. God, that was so weird. I never um, really watched that show much, but I definitely remembered it enough because it was just so bizarre. I will say that. I, I, I can't think of uh, anything stranger than than saying, okay, we're going to write a show about a family with a robot daughter. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Either that's way ahead of its time or just never should have happened. It's like one or the other. But, uh, oh, I, I have a bonus question for you about Small Wonder. Do you remember the name of the robot girl? Yeah, that's a really tough one. Um, it, uh, it feels like Jane maybe, but I don't. I don't have it. I don't think I have this one. Vicky. Vicky. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Vicky with an I. Not not sure how that how that came in. I'm Much sure. less confident in that. Like I said, I I didn't really. I remember seeing That's the so show obscure. on my TV screen as a child, but I just didn't watch it with enough regularity like I did a lot of other TV shows. The the fact that you got the name of a television show about a robot in 1985 is genius. <laughs> okay, hey, let's just call it. it. Let's just call it what it is. Woo! That's one for our side. <laughs> All right. Uh, my fourth trivia question of very random sitcom shows from the 1980s is one near and dear to my heart. It's uh, a television show called Night Court. And yes. I don't know if you recall Night Court. I watched it religiously. It, it was about a newly appointed uh, New York judge who shocks the, the legal world with his unorthodox courtroom behavior can do you remember the name of the judge well uh let's see first off what's the better theme song though the cheers theme song or night courts because i don't know if i could decide between the two they're they're both the cream of the crop of the 80s in my opinion 
Oh, I, I gotta, I gotta go to night court just because cheers, you know, it's so commercial and everybody loves it. Night court's, ah. an, un- night court's an underdog, you know? I agree. I yeah. completely agree. The whole show was an underdog. The whole idea and the concept, they let it flourish too. Cause I think the ratings originally the first season were pretty bad, but that shows you shows like Seinfeld, night court, you give them a chance to grow and you never know what you're going to get. Uh, uh, had John Larroquette. As the Ooh. the swarmy, uh, was he a DA or? or I, I yeah, think he was, uh, he was, was the. the uh, yeah, he was the. Uh, I believe he was the district Pro- prosecutor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Marky Post came on the show later. She originally wasn't on the show right away. There was a lot of cast changes, by the way, because they had uh, so many deaths with the person playing the security guard next to Bull. Old, That's exactly Richard right. Mole. Oh yeah, uh, Bull. like Marshall Winfield's what everybody remembers, but she wasn't really on the show till like the. Th- third or fourth season or something like that. I can't remember exactly what year, but in answer to your question, Britain, uh, Harry Anderson is the the person, was the Harry Anderson the character's name or his real life name? <laughs> he was the actor. Uh, but, but he was also Harry on the show, wasn't he? Yes. Harry Styles? Harry Stone. Harry Stone! That's oh, it. Judge Harold Harold T. Stone oh, uh, was the name of Harry Anderson's, which is kind of confusing, is the oh. name of the character. And I have a bonus uh, Night Court question for you. Judge Stone was obsessed with a singer. Um, I, I want to say a crooner. Is that a word? If if do, but back then like, that is a, I know exactly who it is. So the word you're using is apropos. Yeah, I th- I think that's right. Do you, you're, that's so you're exactly right. who he was. Mel Torme. That's it. Mel the Torme. Velvet Fog. Mel Torme got a lot of run on that show, and then he got another chance to be a part of Seinfeld for that special episode where. Seinfeld, Hurst <laughs> Kramer's playing a mentally challenged person, or he thinks he is because he got <laughs> Novocaine so numbed up from dental surgery, and Mel Torme assumes he's is there for the benefit show, and it's a it's a classic that. episode in that series too. <laughs> well, good for Mel Torme, someone I had never heard of, but as a child, because yeah, I right? loved Night Court, yeah, because I loved Night Court so much, I would you know ask my dad to you know play me. Uh, uh, you know, Mel Torme on the record player, uh, which is what we had back in the 80s. I never fired up a Mel Torme album ever until it's, I had heard who he was, and I just happened to know who he was through TV, really. That's pretty much it. it uh, every Mel Torme song sounds exactly like you think it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, does. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. And by the way, uh, one of my all-time Hall of Fame Unhealthy crushes uh, is Marky Post. She was one of the most beautiful women I ever saw in my lifetime. She died recently, which is very sad. I was, oh, that is I was sad. actually She's sad too, that yeah. day. Yeah, she was only 70, I think. It was very very disappointing. Marky, I hope you're uh, wherever you are. Rest in power. I remember she had the uh, the, the 80s uh, bangs. You know. Oh, yeah. She you could know. call off any look. 80s, 70s, 90s. It didn't matter what era she was in. She was just a, she whew, was she awesome. was a gorgeous woman. Yeah, that was a great And show. funny. And funny. Uh so question number five, I promise I've only got uh, two, uh, two of these left, but I couldn't help but sneak in my favorite sitcom of all time, not Ooh. Seinfeld, not, not uh, uh, Twin Peaks, which was another one of my favorites. Also, Northern Exposure, was, but that was a little bit later. But Wings. <laughs> Do you remember Wings. <laughs> Sure, I remember Wings. Uh, I remember there was a Family Guy bit a few years ago where Quagmire loves the show Wings, and everyone's like, huh? And he gets so angry about it. He's like, I love Wings. He, like, storms off saying, I love Wings over and over again. It's very funny. And I remember a fair amount about that show. That feels like, did that start in the late 80s? Because I feel like that was almost a 90s sitcom. Okay, I uh, I got to fess up. I cheated. It, 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 it. <laughs> Okay, coming clean. It's it. it, it started in 1990, which is mm. really close to 1989. I mean, they're That's practically fine. the same thing. They really were. It's just a year, just a number made just, up, right? It's still a, the just, same world. Hey, you know, if you read, uh, you know, Einstein, you know, numbers are just arbitrary. They, they don't really mean anything. But, uh, but so uh, my all-time favorite show is Wings. Mm. Uh, I, I, 
because of the great ensemble cast. Like remember, uh, Thomas Hayden Church was Lowell, the uh, the mechanic. Uh, Tony Shaloub or Shaloub was in it. He was uh, later. Uh, uh, what was that show where he was a private Monk. investigator? Monk. That's it. He was in it. And your crush was Marky Post. Mine was uh, the 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 lady that ran the diner. Her name was Helen uh, Chapel, I believe was the actress's name. I believe it was Helen Church in the show. But that oh. was my that was my crush going up was the the lady that uh, the actress that ran the diner on Wing. She was awesome. But my the the question is so the the villain in Wings he wasn't really like a bad guy he was just you know insufferable but uh, <laughs> he wasn't like bad per se he didn't like hurt anybody but he was just a jerk but his name was Roy Biggins do you yeah do you the guy the mustache and the black hair kind of a portly fellow he was a large he was a large uh, man uh, and the, the two brothers, the, 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 the good guys, uh, the protagonists, they ran their airline called Sandpiper. D do you remember the name of their arch rivals, uh, Roy Biggins airline? Woo. I know. Now that is a, that That's is a, a deep cut. cut right there. Uh, being someone who. Saw Wings many times. I, I remember watching the show many times. I remember a lot of the actors that portrayed characters on the show. Crystal Bernard and, um, of course, the two brothers. Oh, that, that's being, it, Crystal Bernard, yeah. Yeah, Crystal Bernard. And <clears throat> the two guys, the two brothers, were played by actors that had their own careers. Um, which Stephen... Yeah, I can't believe I'm blanking on some of those names. Stephen but I, Wright? Yeah. I, the, Stephen you, Ray? You recognize, like John, I think John Daly, not, not the golfer. But uh, the, the actor was like the older, like more Stephen serious. Weber was one of them. Stephen, Stephen Weber. Weber was one of them. And then the <laughs> other guy. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the, the other guy, right? Stephen <laughs> Weber was like the fun, you know, the, the, yeah. brother, the brother you want to go hang out with. You know? Yeah. Like he, uh, he always got to have fun while the other brother was always left with doing the actual work and the clerical stuff. But I actually, I do not recall the name of that uh, challenging airline ran by Roy Biggins. Roy Biggins ran uh, Aeromass Air. Mm. Which, I never would have got that. A, a million guesses. What, a, I never would have got that. What a terrible name, Aeromass. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it was wildly horrible. it was wildly successful in Nantucket at the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know the rich people got to fly no matter what. So you can call it anything you want, I guess. Exactly. R Roy, Royal Mass will 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 get you there. <laughs> I guess was the name of it. All right. So last but not least. Another one of my all-time favorite. Uh, I'm pretty sure this one was actually in the 80s as opposed to that last one I tried to sneak by you. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, th this show uh, was called Designing Women. Ooh. And it was a television show with four ladies, and they ran an interior design, hence Designing Women, uh, firm uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Do you do you remember that show, Designing Women, by any chance? Was that was it based in Atlanta? I thought the show was it maybe based in Savannah. I, I oh, thought Savannah. It, uh, yeah, was that, it, I'm not sure if it was or not, but I thought that was a unique part of the show because it was like, oh, of all the places, Savannah. But it's like a it's a well-to-do town. It's got the historic Southern feel to it as well. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. That's just off the top of my head. My brother also used to live in Savannah, so I think of that as well. I'm being well, biased. Well, I may have just disqualified myself from the, the trivia game show because <laughs> oh, no! the, I wrote down Atlanta, <laughs> but I'm not going to testify in court about that. You know what I mean? So uh, it could very well be Savannah, Georgia, but we get the uh, gist of it. You're right. It's fine. Right. It's, 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 it's Southern ladies, I guess. Uh, and they're, <laughs> they're all beautiful Southern ladies in Georgia. But um, so the question is, do you remember the name of the interior design firm that they own and ran. Oh my goodness, that is a really good question. This is definitely an 80s sitcom, so this is not false, fraudulent with any <laughs> prejudice in any way. And you are right, by the way, it was Atlanta, so I apologize, and I should never correct the question offerer or Wh creator. Wikipedia is always right, in my experience. Of course, yeah. I mean, it gets a lot of crap, but yeah. it gets like at least 80% of things right, so oh, yeah, that's pretty a good. Totally 80%. <laughs> uh, man, I 
I remember the four women, and I remember like there was the dude too. He yep. kind of reminded me of Arsenio Hall in some ways, but uh, he wasn't was Arsenio. Like, like Meshach Taylor or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, he, yeah, he was like I don't was know what that, his role that, was in the show, but he was like involved the with them. Ah, man, uh, I, don't, I got nothing on this one. I I've seen the show, but I definitely didn't like dedicate a lot of time to watching designing women and therefore my deep knowledge of the show suffers and i'm going to fail this question i think i i love the show because i i had a a, a healthy crush on delta burke who was one of the actresses <laughs> in the show she she had that uh dark hair and sassy <laughs> attitude which i thought uh, you were gonna say uh any pots i was like yeah okay i get down with that yeah no Andy's great too don't get me wrong but you know that's uh, funny delta had the dude you know to 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 walk the walk so that's oh yeah she definitely had a the biggest personality i would agree yeah she 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 was something she was sassafras but uh, (laughs) uh, the the name of the firm was simply sugar bakers because (sighs) that was the you know the dixie carter was the main uh, uh protagonist in that show and her last name was Sugar Baker. So uh, I, that's. Oh, I wait a minute. So was Delta Burke's character. They were sisters. That, okay. That, I'm reading this right. now after the fact. I'm on IMDb totally cheating now. I wasn't right. cheating before, but I wanted to look up the Atlanta thing and that's I wanted to look up this cast. So Yeah. So it's, it was yeah. called Sugar Bakers. That's right. That makes sense. I always thought that was cool. I, I liked. Uh, Sounds like a bakery, but okay. I know. I mean, it, it, I, I want to go. What, if some place is called Sugar Bakers, I, I sign me up. I want to see what's Let's going go. On. <laughs> I don't need to hear much else. I'm ready. Hey, yeah, yeah. You go to Atlanta, Georgia, and they're like, "Hey, uh, Sugar Bakers is open." You're like, oh, <laughs> "Sign me up. Let's go check it out." <laughs> that sounds kind of weird. I'm not sure what I'm getting at. Anyway, so that that was all the trivia of uh, kind of 1980s, maybe 1999 trivia. Uh, thank you for being a good sport. I really enjoy uh, talking. Uh, random sitcoms from a long time ago <laughs> it was awesome that was hey, that was well done and i enjoyed all of that i i never wanted it to end you did really i i, I still can't believe you got um mel mac uh <laughs> that, that i think you deserve your own elf plush toy as a prize just for getting nailing that question because that i i would have guessed that that would would have been the hardest but i wonder if my friend's daughter still has that plush toy. i'm gonna go back over the house and see if it's still there i might swipe it back and say you know what i'm sorry this thing belongs in my house and i just will care about it more because i know where he's from melmac means so much to me elf is so making a comeback on fantasy baseball podcasts everywhere <laughs> <laughs> You better run me now, by the way. I'm going to do this in a tribute to you. I'm going to add some ALF audio to the show because we should have some ALF audio clips, and I can't believe I don't have any. So that's going to be something that I will rectify after the show is over. I guarantee that. I, I knew my contribution to society uh, <laughs> w- would come at, at some point in my life, and t- today is, is the day. Here it because- is! Yes, I've brought Alf back into the the conversation, which I couldn't be more <laughs> excited about. But uh, I, you know, you are kind of not kind of you are a pro podcaster. Like you've you've mastered, you know the 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 drops, and you know when I watch your podcast on YouTube, you've got all the cool stuff going on. So, <laughs> how in the world can I segue from? <laughs> Annie Potts in designing women to fantasy baseball players that are hitting at the top of their order recently. I, well, the only in I see off the top of my head would have been to you're talking about Atlanta. We could have segued into the the devastation Bread, of yeah. Ozzy Albies getting injured, and that uh, they have, somehow we would end up talking about fantasy baseball. And then next thing you know, we'd be talking about. The hitters that hit in the top part of an order, and Albies, although Albies usually hit like fifth, I don't think he was in the top part of the order. But um. he he was last year when he was uh, you know super hot. I believe didn't didn't Ozzy for most of last year hit first and uh, Acuna hit second. I think that's how it went, or maybe it, yeah, I that does sound familiar. Yeah, but once Acuna went out, he definitely was at the top of the order. Yeah. Well, that is that is a great suggestion because 
since you are a, uh, a, a manager of a team with Ozzy Albies and he has uh, got a, f- a foot fracture, he will be out for the foreseeable f- future, unfortunately. Two months guaranteed. I, two months guaranteed. And then nothing's guaranteed after that, depending on no. how the hu- uh, uh, human bones recover, which no one can know that for a fact. But how <laughs> would you... <laughs> uh, that was some deep analysis right there uh, from Dr. Uh, Britton. But uh, how would you like... Would you be interested in rostering a player who currently plays every day second base for the Pittsburgh Pirates, who is batting leadoff who is a lefty, but they also start him batting leadoff against lefties. They've done it twice in the past five days. Who also has probably the coolest, one of the coolest names in Major League Baseball, Tucapita Marcano. I would be interested in Mr. Marcano. I had more interest last week, and I was slightly concerned that maybe the playing time might get a little bit could less opportunistic for him. And at the same time, I just didn't know what he would provide from a power standpoint. Cause I know he could run and he can get out base a little bit. So I, I guess I would be interested. Yeah. You know, especially now, but I will say this, I don't want to ruin your segment here either, but there is a lot, a lot of opportunity in the middle infield world. In fact, my main event roster, even though Albies is hurt and he's going to be off my roster, I got plenty of guys who can slide into that situation. In fact, I got an overload. I've got a glut of middle infielders with Andre Semenez and Javi Ooh. Baez, who was horrendous. Uh, uh, maybe that's not the best option, but uh, there's just so many guys there that I can slide into that position. So I will miss Albies, but in kind of a way, a strange way, it frees me up to let a middle infielder go and maybe fill that roster spot with another more important part of my roster. That's just a side note. But yeah, of course I'd be interested in Marcano. I love what he does and brings to the table. He's got, a, he could do almost anything on the field. And if he's going to be at the top of that lineup now, I mean, let's party. Let's do this, Britain. Well, let, let, let me say this just because I spent uh, hours on my uh, Mar- Marcano notes. He's on a four game hitting streak, <laughs> batting 311, just like the band. All mixed up, don't know what to do. That's right. He, Next thing you turn around, you find that person is person you. Person is you, yeah. Uh, so he's only appeared in 16 games, but he's got two home runs, one stolen base. Obviously, he hits in front of Brian Reynolds, who's really coming on. And then, you know, one of my favorite players, Key Brian Hayes, who is, who is batting yeah. third. So Marcano is kind of, you know, under the radar. I mean, he's rostered in less than 10% of leagues. Uh, so he's just some, somebody to keep your eye on. But See what what happened. You mentioned my favorite player, who I uh, my last podcast I did a whole thing on Andre Jimenez, the uh, second baseman for the Guardians, where I professed my love. I I tried to hold it, I couldn't. I professed my love of Andre Jimenez, who is <laughs> and, it, and I'm going to be real here, who is a much better version of Tupac Capita Marcana because he's got more power, more stolen bases, and his average is just as good. The only thing about – and let me talk to you about this while uh, while you bring it up. The thing about Yemen is he doesn't walk. Uh, his walk rate is, like, abysmal. Um, so that's, like, the only thing that, that kind of worries me about him. But, man, he's got that post-hype, you know, superstar – you know, thing like when you watch him play, he's he's got it kind of like a no, Ronald Acuna maybe over hyperbole a little bit, but he's <laughs> Andre Jimenez has got it, yeah. And um, and so I I I hope he gets the the walk rate up. That's that's got to happen because eventually you, you got to take walks. But uh, one of my most got, drafted players, Jimenez, without a doubt, this year. So. And see, that's the only thing that, and, and I brought him up last week, even though he wasn't, I, I, as I said on the last, last week's podcast, I had to break all these bylaws and, and triple, <laughs> triple play uh, three uh, rules and regulations uh, because he, he doesn't bat one, two, or three, never has. He bats uh, fifth or sixth. But, ah, uh, but that must have hurt you. It really did, but that, but that I couldn't help it. I had to talk about Andre Jimenez, and like he's in the <laughs> 95th percentile of speed. Like, man, put him at the top. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I do love him. But uh, 
my second player, who is obviously well known, it's AJ Pollock. Have you noticed that for the past five games, they've been batting him first for the Chicago White Sox, and he's killing it. His he's got five straight multi-hit games. Uh, in one game, he had three hits. He's smoking hot. He's hitting RBIs. Most of that team is not hot, but uh, AJ <laughs> Pollock is. And obviously he's well known, but I feel like people are kind of tired of him. Maybe, you know, in your 10, 12 team leagues, didn't realize that, you know, he got traded from the Dodgers. They're like, where, where is he? Like, I don't know. But uh, so, yeah, but he's been batting uh, number one or lead off for the Chicago White Sox. He's uh, he had that one. Remember that superstar season he had what was it, like a 30, 20 season or something crazy like five years ago. Mm hmm. And then he's kind of been hurt ever since. But uh, <laughs> what what do you think? Is AJ Pollock somebody you can get get back on the bandwagon, or do you think it's just like yeah, AJ Pollock, whatever? Yeah, when AJ Pollock stole thirty nine bags in twenty fifteen, and he hit three fifteen for the season, like a full season, one hundred sixty games almost. So that's money. Makers. Those, yeah, that's. That's sugar bakers for sure. I'm down. <laughs> I mean, I hear that. I come a calling just like when I hear sugar bakers. And the thing is, I didn't realize first that he was getting that type of run. So kudos to you. This is a good call on your part, Britain. And the second part is, yeah, I get tired of him. I think of him as a constant injury risk and a guy that I just can't trust enough and the type of player that I'd rather avoid on my rosters. Unless he fell so far in drafts, I might consider it. But even then, you don't want to go chasing a name just because they fall. That's what gets you into trouble a lot of times in fantasy baseball. So this is a great call on your part, and I'm all for it. Well done. Yeah, and so, you, you know, this is – A.J. Pollock's the girl that you date, right? Yeah. You, you're not you're not getting married to AJ Pollock. You, you got married to your first round, second round, you know, third round <laughs> pick. Like you're you're just dating. You know, you're not going to like give her your cell phone uh, passcode or anything like that. <laughs> you know, this is like t temporary temporary <laughs> bliss is what I would call AJ Pollock. You know, like just ride out that hot streak. He may be on the waiver wire because I, you know, I kind of and I did this too. I I I, I was like. Why would they trade? Why would the Chicago White Sox trade for old, busted, washed out AJ Pollock? But hey, you know, five, six, seven games, he's putting up numbers. And if you've got that five outfielder league with, you know, uh, I don't, who, who's like a fifth outfielder that's so easily replaceable? Uh, uh, you know, some like, um, oh, I know I've got, I know I've yeah. got a bunch. Uh, you know, some, uh, the Tigers had plenty, like a Victor Reyes or something oh, like yeah. that. So. Oh man, I, now I do love Victor Reyes. Uh, he's a mm. that he was Rule Five, uh, Rule Five guy. I, I, Eric I Haas. Was, I don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking of like the lowest of the low on a terrible roster. My Detroit Tigers, they don't get much worse when it comes to offense. There, well, I want to go back to Pollock here. He's still rocking the 86 WRC plus, which is below average. 100 is average. But for his career, he's a 115. So he's a career above average player, as you mentioned. So that is intriguing. That's why you look at shorter stints, recent game logs like you're doing here to see, hey, what is this person doing right now? Because sometimes the full season story doesn't tell what the player's doing in the moment. And if you want to strike while the uh, proverbial iron is hot, then you have to look at things in a smaller sample size, even though you don't want to put too much stock in a smaller sample size. So you see what I'm saying here? I'm basically contradicting myself at every turn and just making it more confusing for you out there in fantasy baseball world. Uh, yeah, exactly. But, but you're exactly right. Like this is this is a hot streak by a player who has proven results. He's also proven injury prone too, but he's also proven he can hit home runs. He can. He's a professional baseball player that that can. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, get on a hot streak, and once that hot streak's over. You know, it's like uh, when, like, like when you're dating the, the new girl. You know, like uh, you're, you're dating, and you wake up, and you go to the bathroom. It's like two a.m., and you wake up, and she's she's got your phone, <laughs> and she's like going through your text, and you're like, AJ Pollock has right hamstring, and, but but in, but in this <laughs> in this story, you're like you're like, why are you reading my text in the middle of the night? She's like, oh, I thought it rang, and you know it didn't ring because you didn't. No. Hear it <laughs> So, it, but so there, so you know, like, like, like AJ Pollock, when you see that right hamstring soreness, 
is like when you Ooh. wake up and you see your your new friend reading your text messages without your permission. Red Ooh. flags. Yeah. Red flags. Heads up. Run, so yeah. Be cautious. Safe. Be cautious. Be safe out there, people. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, the third player for the three uh, is a magic number is a, a guy that's had a tough time in his major league career that uh, I've always rooted for. He was a top pick in uh, 2016. Number two overall is Nick Senzel uh, for the Cincinnati Reds. He, man, he's been on the IL uh, more than A.J. Pollock has. <laughs> he's got A.J. <laughs> Pollock. He beats A.J. Pollock in that. But uh, So he's been batting leadoff for the Reds, too, ever since he's been back. I believe it was, it was this uh, past Friday. So he's back. Uh, he's, he's ready to go. The Cincinnati Reds, I mean, you know, I hate to say a team's out of it when you've got months and months left, but it ain't looking yeah. great. So, yeah. yeah. So they are going to give, and I'm not actually in on any of the internal memos, <laughs> but uh, the Cincinnati Reds. You're not. I, I know. Okay. Right. Yeah, believe right. it or not. Even though yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, I did go, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I drove with some friends to Cincinnati for opening day which I highly yeah. like. I, I'm not a Cincinnati Reds fan, but I just, I love baseball. But one of, one of my I used buddies, to live there. So. Oh, you did? Oh, great. Well, yeah, I lived there for a year in uh, 04, 05, back in the day. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, I loved it. And I've been in Cincinnati a couple of times, but it was for work. But we stayed downtown at the Cincinnatian Hotel. Oh. And, uh, uh, you know, thank you, uh, Hilton Points, <laughs> for, for that hotel stay. And, uh, yeah, so we did the whole thing. We got up, and you know they had the parade, and this was back when Sonny Gray was on the team, and uh, who Tony Disco. Uh, uh, Those are the days. Yeah, Disco Fani. And so we sat there, and with all the the the, the Reds uh, fan base going nuts, and we saw the parade, and uh, I saw I counted ninety nine uh, Johnny Bench jerseys everywhere. I mean these <laughs> these people, the Cin people of Cincinnati, love the Cincinnati Reds, obviously, and. It was just it was just a great opening day, and so if you're ever That's in awesome. the, yeah if you're ever in the Cincinnati uh, area for whatever reason, try to see if you can set it on opening day because I mean this, the whole city it was it was like I I've never been to Mardi Gras but I've heard stories and I pretty much assume it's the same type of thing. They do opening day as good as any team in MLB ever did it, and for the longest time the tradition has since gone bye bye. But they were the first game of every season. Right off the bat, the first game earlier in the day before any other team took the field. That was the official opening day of baseball. And the Reds and the fan base, they all came together. Like you said, everything you described, the fanfare and the Johnny Benches and probably the Pete Roses, too. I mean, they're out there as well, the Pete Rose truthers. But I liked watching games in Cincinnati, and I enjoyed my time there, although it was brief. It's a beautiful city. You got Covington on the other side, Newport on the other side of the river in Kentucky. It's basically the tri-state area there because Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio all converge right there in Cincinnati. When I worked there, I was actually part of WLWT News Channel 5, the NBC affiliate. I was a photojournalist. So oh, that's awesome. I used to, yeah, I mean, I went out on the streets sometimes. A lot of times I was cutting video and editing it for our morning show. So I worked the overnights, really, where you had to be at work at like 1 a.m. to get ready. Because people are dying to have that 5 a.m. show. They just want it to be ready to go. So we got to make sure we get there. Yeah. <laughs> and I get out, I get out of work at like 9 a.m. and I don't know who I am and I'm tired and I got to go to bed. And my, I'm living in the exact opposite life of a lot of other people at that time. But it was fun. Man, the, those hours are, are a young man's game or a young woman's <laughs> game. I mean... You know, getting to work at one a.m. or whatever, and and you know, trying to have a a, a life is is something you can only <laughs> something you can only do when you're a certain age. But not uh, great for the family. If you're going to have a family, it's a challenging lifestyle. I would say that's pretty accurate. I bet it was exciting though, and and I love Cincinnati. I like being in the downtown area. Um, so, uh, it's Cincinnati skyline chili. What <laughs> as as a former resident, uh, a Cincinnati resident. Can you give me like is that skyline chili? I've had it and I, I thought it was uh, way too cinnamony for my yes! taste. But what what as an actual you know resident? What's your take on the skyline ch chili? Well, you're uh, hitting a very hard core nerve for me, Britton. I completely agree with you. I went and tried it. I sat down at a skyline chili because that's what they talk about. Skyline chili. It's basically the Cincinnati style of chili. They put it on spaghetti noodles too, which is also done. And I think 
much better by Steak and Shake, another arrival of Skyline Chili. That's it's right. Much, much mac. less sweeter. Or I thought it was nutmeg. I, I'm not proud of this, but I, <laughs> I read, when I went, first went to college at 17 years old, 18, and I, <laughs> I read on the internet. This is back in 98. The internet was a little bit more raw back then. Mm -hmm. So you should really not believe everything you read on the internet at that time. And someone said if you took a bunch of nutmeg, the, the seasoning, the spice, that you could get high from it. Right. So <laughs> I tried that once. It, it kind of worked. didn't really work. We just laid in bed for two days. It was really stupid. <laughs> it was just a very long nap. I can tell you that in my dorm room. Uh, my friend Dave can attest to that. But it reminded me when I ate that Skyline Chili, it was that nutmeg. Because I put a bunch of nutmeg in my mouth. If you've ever done, like, the cinnamon challenge where people you see that, they put the cinnamon in their mouth. How much can you swallow? It's really challenging to do because it's so dry and you really can't swallow it. It's awful. So it reminded me of all that. And I just thought Skyline was overrated. Not very good. And to this day, I refuse to eat it. And I find Take a Shake to be a much better version of the so-called cincinnati style chili with chili on top of spaghetti that that's my my father is from st louis and one of his all-time favorite meals is he calls it uh, uh spaghetti mac which is exactly what you're saying it's spaghetti noodles down with onions and chili and beans yes and, yes yeah with beans and, yeah and put and you know put the the, the shredded cheddar on top so Exactly. Uh, and at Steak and Shake, they still they call it the five way chili. They have a three way and a five way. That's basically what it is. Three way has a couple less items. Five way has all the items that Britain just mentioned that your father loved. And I, I haven't been to Steak and Shake in a few years, but I remember enjoying the five way chili tremendously at three in the morning. Uh yeah, it's delicious. I I grew up on that with uh my, my mom and dad would make the you know chili mac five five way chili. Nice. That, I never had a awesome. homemade one. I, I gotta try a homemade one. I didn't realize it was from Cincinnati, though. I I guess I just assumed since my dad was from St. Louis that, of course, it came from St. Louis. <laughs> you know, that makes because where else could it possibly come from? Yeah, I believe my information is correct, but then again, like you, I mean, we're talking from minimal Skylar, research yeah. here. Yeah, you know, kind of. I'm uh, just going by the seat of my pants and what I learned in life. And if I'm living a lie, please let me know, folks, because I always want to know the truth. I want the truth. I want the blue pill. Uh, yeah, or, 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 whichever, whichever whichever one puts you back to sleep. That's yeah, good. oh, you, oh, okay, yeah. You want to you yeah, want the, the opposite. The you don't want to be overrated. Neo. I like, like, <laughs> like I like Trinity, and, and that's awesome. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I like. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not getting the the the, the thing jacked in my skull. I, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Ignorance <laughs> is bliss. The Britain yeah. Allen show. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no hero, Michael. I'm just I'm just crazy, you know. But. Uh, Anyway, sorry to get off on a tangent there. I was uh, uh, Nick Senzel. To, no, I was talking about. Thank you very much. I was talking about uh, Nick Senzel, former first round pick, second overall pick, has had a pretty injury played career. Uh, you know, I feel like if the, if it's going to happen, it, it it has to happen, and I'm rooting for him. I'm glad they're batting him lead off. So just get him in there, get him all the plate appearances he can handle and just say, right, here you go. Let's go for it. Um, he hasn't been hitting great this year. If you look at his uh, fan grass page or uh, stat cast page, things aren't going great. Um, he, he did have a hit in two walks yesterday, which is, which is good when you're, when you're lead off, you want to get on base. So sure. hopefully they, hopefully they give they give him an opportunity. So that's one player I thought I would uh, bring up and see see what you thought about Nick Sanzel. Just kind of a, I just I'm just rooting, you know, I'm just rooting for him. Pick, I guess. Uh, hey, go get him, buddy. Never yeah. give up, Nick Sanzel. He's actually on my main Yo, event right. roster. Another guy on my main event roster is Nick Sanzel. He's in my outfield. So even though he is a bummer at times and he gets injured a lot, and you never know what you're gonna get. He's had vertigo. He's had shoulder stuff. He's had so many different types of injuries, but. When you need steals as desperately as I do, I'm dead last in my main event league in steals. Dead last. And I was like, beyond dead last. What's more than dead? What's worse than being dead? What's uh, worse Alberto than dead? Mon Alberto Mondesi dead? Yeah, like it's that yeah. bad. I, I had just cracked double-digit steals like a, 10 days ago. It was that bad. I was really, really getting screwed by Javi Baez not stealing. Ozzy yeah. Albies didn't steal much. And Mike Trout has abandoned it entirely. He no longer steals ever again. Not yeah. even one attempt this year not one so it's over Zero so nick senzel's a guy that i needed i i think once he signed that contract and there it says 300 
and then like a bunch of zeros after that, you're kind of like, I think my, <laughs> I think my, my, my sliding head first days are, are pretty much over. But yeah. what do you think about that lawyers and wife? They're like, yeah, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> Hey, I can still hit and fill four of the five cats in a five by five, so that's fine. He's still a top thirty fantasy asset, but he's no oh, longer okay. ever going to be considered a number one pick again. But you know who has defied those odds is uh, everybody's favorite third baseman, Jose Ramirez. Uh, you know he yeah. signed his contract, and it's not three hundred million, but it's it's you know uh, what one fifty. It's a lot of it's a ton of money, and is he's it? just he's just hustles every single day, every single play. He's uh, I don't know how we got off on uh, uh, Jose Ramirez, but I just love him. All all he does is just hustle. And He and does, I, yeah. That, that's awesome. He's fun to root for. But in the end here, if Nick Senzel is leading off every day, you get those plate appearances, that's a bonus. You get some steals here and there. He stole back-to-back -back steals in two games on the 5th and the 6th of June, and then he hasn't stolen in about a week. But they'll come again. There'll be more opportunities. The fact that he's even least attempting to run is a positive for Nick Senzel's value. And the Cincinnati offense is not their problem. I mean, they could, they get a lot out of who they've got and they've got the best ballpark in baseball. Yes, I said it. It's as good as Coors. In fact, a uh, shout out to my friend, John L. John Legaza. He said it in a chat earlier today that he put Coors and Great mm. American Ballpark on par, right? Equally. And I agree with him completely because they... <laughs> The stats show it. The ballpark factors this year, and they've always been good. It's not like Cincinnati just showed up all of a sudden. Is wow, look at this park. The ball really flies here all of a sudden. No, it's always been that way. It's always been a band box. So that's another benefit for Senzel playing half his games in that stadium. I, I love it. Uh, so it's a good stadium. He's batting leadoff. Uh, he's got the pedigree. He just needs to do it. So, uh, you know, keep your eye on Nick Senzel. And uh, also keep your eye on the coolest name for the Pittsburgh Pilots. I know I'm not pronouncing this right, but it's uh, Tukaputia Marcano. <laughs> That's no I think you're, you're right. I think you're making it harder on yourself. Yeah, but, it's uh, Tukupita. 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 Yes, Tukupita. Uh, Say it with me. Tukupita. Tukupita. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like that scene in Beverly Hills Cop when uh, Axel Foley is telling uh Sage. Yeah. Sage. It's like... Uh, uh, Akhel, Akmel, <laughs> Axel. <Well. laughs> uh, and then it just goes Foley. <laughs> that's you know, that's yeah, the Falky Ball Talk of Us for Perky that's, Strangers. Let me tell you, that uh, that actor stole every scene he was in, which is hard to do with uh, somebody as talented as uh, Eddie Murphy. But Bronson uh, Pinchot, that was Pinchot. his name. Bronson Nailed Pinchot. It. Man, we're, yeah. we're just getting these 80s sitcoms. All, all over the place. It's we're, three, we're in sync. We're in uh, sync here, man. Yeah. We've what, wasted a lot of our brain space on pointless information. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't using it anyway. So there, there's, there's <laughs> but, Sounds uh, like a typical American. That makes sense. I'm right there with you. I'll raise my hand along right side, right there. Right. Uh, so uh, Marcano, uh, also to keep an eye on, batting leadoff for the Pirates against, uh, he's a lefty, uh, starting uh, against lefties too. That's a really good sign. Sounds like they're going to let him go. And and a guy I think 100% to pick up, ride while he's hot, A.J. Pollock. He's done it before. He's doing it now, which I guess is the most important thing. So uh, look to see if A.J. Pollock's out there on your waiver wire. I mean, you know, some uh, – some people, you know, may have got tired of him and tossed him out there. And when he wasn't hitting, well, he's hitting now and he's batting a lead off. And I think it's just a matter of time before the White Sox kind of turn things around. Of course, they have to fire T Tony Larusa, and I don't want anyone to get fired. But you know, if they do, you know, maybe things will turn around. But we'll see. Sometimes things never should have happened in the first place. So if it has to rectify, it's unfortunate. It's not like the guy. Never had a great career. I mean, he's a Hall of Fame manager, so I'm not going to feel yeah. that bad for him. If he was a first-time guy that kind of got screwed by his situation, I'd feel a lot more bad for him, but that's not the case with Tony Russa. He's won World Series many times over. He's a Hall of Famer. He's had a good life. I don't feel as bad for a guy that needs to probably go because that clubhouse needs a new voice. He's a new voice. Uh, that's what that's what they always say, you know. Yeah, you wanna, that's what they always wanna, say. When you want to be nice to the manager that you just fired like kicked out the door you're like <laughs> they needed a new voice like 
you know, the, you know, like the, the voice, like the TV show, like, I, you, <laughs> no, you, you, you canned them because you lost 12 straight. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's what they did to uh, Mad Night West. Anyway. Gotta love that spin, baby. Well, uh, once again, Michael, I've uh, taken too much uh, of your time. Your, your generosity is amazing. I really enjoyed talking with you. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. And uh, if anyone is still actually listening at this point, because it, it went way over that, that, uh, that, that I was planning on. I bet there'd be one person at least. And one person. I'm going to make sure he hears it. It's going to be baseball pods. You follow baseball pods on Twitter? I, I do. Absolutely. Chris, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I bet. I bet he'll listen right now. Chris, if you're still listening, I wanted to save this for you. De La Soul also did a great song called Three is the Magic Number. And what? I know that, yeah, and I know that he would love that because he's a massive hip-hop uh, fan and he's loved rap his whole life. So if I didn't mention De La Soul's Three is the Magic Number, he would have been very upset. It's one of my favorite De La Soul songs, actually. Three me, is the Magic Number. Yeah, me, myself, and us. I love that, me myself and I. that's a great song too. That, Ego yeah. tripping. I mean, De La Soul is a classic uh, of the late '80s. I mean, definitely '90s. I don't know if they actually started. I think they did start in the late '80s, but I, either I way, be, three yeah. is the magic number. Three, three is three is the magic number. That that also remember uh, uh, me myself and I. So that so they got the three thing covered. It's, yeah, they it's, really it's are into like triads. Yeah, weird. So to to Chris, uh, the the only one remaining listener, thank you so much uh, uh, to everyone that listened. If you are still listening, and please go uh, number one, uh, check out uh, Michael's fantasy baseball confidential article on Fantrax. It's awesome. It's got all these great nuggets of information of uh, to to use on fantasy baseball. Uh, your decisions. It's just really great, really great stuff, and it's all relevant to fantasy. And please also uh, uh, listen or watch on YouTube the Palazzo Two L's Two Z's. I don't know what this means. This n neither an L nor a Z, but uh, <laughs> Two L's Two L's Two Z's for the Palazzo podcast. It's fun. It's energetic. It, it's a great show. Uh, Michael, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot again. Um, and uh, take it easy. Thank you so much, Britain. It's been a pleasure being here. Everybody, follow this guy and let's get this podcast going. Let's do it. All right. See y'all. Have a great week.